Happy New Year, everyone. Hi, my name is Louise. I'd like to begin today by acknowledging the traditional custodians of the land where we're standing, the Turrbal and Yagara people, and pay my respects to their leaders past, present and emerging. I hope you had a great new year and are settling into 2024. Unfortunately, the reality is that many of us will be facing challenges this year, and I know that some of us already are having the looming ahead. But today, Michael Hindle is bringing us a message on pushing through hardships and how God can help us through any circumstance. What a fabulous lesson to start this new year with. Before we hear from Michael, though, why don't you join us in worship as we sing together? Good morning. I invite you to join us as we praise God together today. We're going to praise Him regardless of our circumstances because He's a God worth praising. reading is from 2 Corinthians chapter 6 verses 1 to 13. As God's co-workers we urge you not to receive God's grace in vain for he says in the time of my favour I heard you and in the day of salvation I helped you. 
I tell you, now is the time of God's favour. Now is the day of salvation. We put no stumbling block in anyone's path so that our ministry will not be discredited. Rather, as servants of God, we commend ourselves in every way, in great endurance, in troubles, hardship, hardships and distresses, in beatings, imprisonments and riots, in hard work, sleepless nights and hunger, in purity, understanding, patience and kindness, in the Holy Spirit and in sincere love, in truthful speech and in the power of God, with weapons of righteousness in the right hand and in the left, through glory and dishonour, bad report and good report, genuine yet regarded as impostors, known yet regarded as unknown, dying and yet we live on, beaten and yet not killed, sorrowful yet always rejoicing, poor yet making many rich, having nothing and yet possessing everything. We have spoken freely to you, Corinthians, and opened wide our hearts to you. We are not withholding our affection from you, but you are withholding yours from us. As a fair exchange, I speak as to my children. Open wide your hearts also. Amen. Well, good morning. For those that don't know me, my name is Michael, and I've been coming to NBC for a year now. Um, The day that this is being released is the 7th of January, and I want you to understand something, that if you have set a New Year's goal, you've most likely already failed at it. Trust me, most Aussies do. And that's part of the thing of this year, this new year of 2024, is that we're going to continue on in hardship, be it be the hardships of 2023 or the first seven days of this new year. A little bit about myself. Last year, we moved to Brisbane from a town called Young in regional New South Wales. And the main reason we moved here was because my father was sick. Sadly, later on uh, in 2023, on the 28th of April, my father passed away. And I found myself continuing on in hardship. Not only was I grieving the loss of a ministry and working in a new ministry role with the Salvation Army, but I was also watching my children grieve friendships that they had left behind. I had seen my father slowly deteriorate, or should I say rapidly deteriorate, with motor neuron disease. And there I was grieving. And there was times where I'd come to church and I didn't want to be here. There was times where I was with God and I just didn't want to talk to him. But yet I continued on with hardship. I continued on because I knew God had his hand on my life. So we've just heard the scripture and in the reading, we, we hear the Apostle Paul telling the Corinth church an important message, a message that echoes out of the pages of our Bibles and is truly relevant in today's world. Now, a bit of information is that Paul founded the Corinth church, and we see that in Acts 18, around 50 years after the death of Jesus and the resurrection. And he spent about 18 months partially caring for new believers. Before moving on to establish the Ephesus church and spending two to three years there. So something has gone wrong. When the Apostle Paul left and returned throughout his letter, he addresses the church. There has been an upheaval of believers as they have been led astray from from what they have now learnt about Jesus And they've been led astray by false teachers and old habits. Some have even rejected Paul's teaching. After his visit, Paul follows with with what is known as his fourth letter, which was written with anguish and tears. Now, I don't know about you, but I always envision Paul being a well-put-together bloke, someone that people would look up to, someone that people would respect someone that would demand attention when they walk into a room just by being there. But Paul was a small man of stature. He was bald-headed and he had been known to have a crooked leg with eyebrows meeting and a nose somewhat hooked. This is what scholars believe Paul looked like. 
in 2 Corinthians 11.6, we read by his own admissions that I may be unskilled as a speaker, but I am not, not lacking in knowledge. We have made this clear to you in every possible way. Paul worked in his weaknesses. Paul did not try to hide his weaknesses or his hardship, but he worked through it. Now, when Paul left his old life to follow Jesus, he lost his stature of being a Pharisee. And so Paul would then have to work later on in life to support his ministry by making tents, a trade that he had learnt as a young Jewish boy. It is clear that Paul is not flash. It makes you wonder if he's not very good looking and if he's not a great public speaker, then was he a good candidate even to be a Pharisee? Like, how did he get that role? And he probably wasn't a great Pharisee. Hence why Paul, then known as Saul, made a name for himself by killing believers of Jesus. And he did this legally with the approval of the Jewish leaders and the Roman Empire. But now that he's had a conversion, now he is no longer against the Christian church, Paul finds himself having to make tents, going from a place of stature down to a tradesman level of life. So when other shiny preachers come along, when other shiny teachers, those that boast, those that try and attract Paul's believers, the believers of Jesus, that are still uh, maturing in faith, of course, some of them fell astray. They used cunning ways to make them uh, feel guilt-free by focusing on the here and now, just like sometimes we have in today's world. The issue is they were focus-serving uh, focus to self and not focus on the kingdom of God. The Apostle Paul calls them to remember the kindness of God and not, uh, and not to ignore it. Paul uses the prophet Isaiah's words in verse 2. This is what the Lord says. At just the right time, I will respond to you. On the day of salvation, I will help you. And that's from Isaiah 49, 8. How many times have you felt God's timing, the right timing? Not our timing, not the timing we're begging for from God, but the right timing from God. Well, when I was a tradesman before being a minister for the Salvation Army, I was always terrible at paying my taxes, being a subcontractor. And I had a bit of a uh, tax debt that was uh, due with the tax office. And I was a bit stressed about this, and I didn't know exactly how I would fix it. And what I didn't know is what Kat had overestimated our annual uh, wages for the year, which meant that Centrelink hadn't given us all of uh, the tax benefit A and B for families. And there, in God's timing, that nice payment came from Centrelink and was enough to cover my tax. Now, I did not realise Katrina had overestimated, and I don't know if Katrina was stressed like I was about the debt. And it wasn't my timing that that money came in, but God's timing. The timing was out of our hands. And I thank God that he's got the timing right. And so I can still today, at times of time, get distracted from a marvellous gift of God's kingdom and ignore them out of my ignorance, not seeing his timing. My timing of moving back to Brisbane is filled with hardship and pain, yet it was God's timing. So Paul uh, writes, uh, to live in hardship isn't just for the church of Corinth, but also for the present church today. We pick it up uh, from 2 Corinthians 6, 3 to 6, says this, We live in such a way that no one will stumble because of us. And no one will find fault with our ministry. In everything we do, we show that we are true ministers of God. We patiently endure troubles and hardship 
and calamities of every kind. We have been beaten, been put in prison, faced angry mobs, worked to exhaustion, endured sleepless nights and gone without food. We prove ourselves by our purity, our understanding, our patience, our kindness by the Holy Spirit within us and by our sincere love. Paul encourages all believers not to be a reason for someone to stumble. And I want you to understand that sometimes when we react in hardship, that we can become a stumbling block for the people around us. See, people aren't leaving churches because God's not showing up. I believe people leave churches because the people in the church aren't reflecting God when they are going through hardships. And we're all human and we all may do that from time to time, but we need to focus on continuing and striving through for Christ. The good news is when we stumble and become a tripping hazard for others, we can grow from it and others can if we are willing to own our mistakes. We are to show not only in the good times, but through our hardships, a life of purity. It's always easy to praise God when life is going good. It's always easy to be thankful for God when life is going good. But there was a Sunday in 2023 where I sat in NBC. And all the songs were about how God's gratefulness was and how much we were going to praise him. And there I broke and I wept because that was the attitude of my father. As MND took control of my father's body, he continued to praise God. And one of his last audible words that was clear was the word, Amen. So not just in the good times, but in the hardships, a life of purity, understanding through our patience and by our kindness to others, even if they are not kind back, most importantly, we are to show such godly characters that reveals the Holy Spirit uh, to others through love, through our love, through our patience. How hard it is to love in hardship. And that's not always easy. Personally, I, am, I have always been a glass empty person, which means I can be a bit of a winder at times. I can be a little bitter and salty at some people or a group of people or at a situation. That's my personal default setting. So I know it's not easy and I know it's sometimes hard to show those characters that Paul lays out in verse 6. I also know that when I do not share a godly characteristics, the world can label me as a bad Christian and I become a stumbling block for others. And the devil will try and remind me that day in, day out, so I won't be able to get back up and dust my knees off. I know it's not by my own strength that I remain in Christ, but through the strength of the Holy Spirit and in the Holy Spirit's guidance. Even in hardship, God's marvellous gift of kindness is always present. We need to seek him and seek his gift and not ignore them when they, are, when they are not the gifts we want. Sometimes it's hard to help someone if they don't want to be helped in the way that you can help them or they demand things that you cannot provide. God may just have his reasons for not lifting our hardships the way we want them to cause uh, the way we want them. He may be trying to teach us something. We're going to uh, have the music team. They're going to bring a song called No Longer a Slave to Fear. I am a child of God. And one of the biggest things I found through my hardship was the devil, like I said earlier, reminding me day in and day out that I was not good enough. So, as we've reached day seven of 2024, and if you have stumbled and have, you know, not reached those goals that you've set at the start of the year, don't beat yourself up. Show the patience that God provides. 
show the love that God provides not only to yourself but to those around you. And as you're going through hardship, don't run away from God and hide yourself, but meet him there in that hardship and be set free and know that you are a child of God. Okay. Let's join in prayer. Dear God, we thank you that you've ushered in a new year. And Lord, we are hopeful that this year brings blessing. Lord, that this year brings kindness. This year brings joy. And Lord, that we can wash away the hardships from the previous year. But God, we know that as we walk uh, in faith, that life is not easy. We're not promised an easy walk. We know we're going to be persecuted in our work sites. We know we're going to be persecuted with family members, Lord. We know that we're going to be harsh on ourselves and critical of ourselves. We seek the blood of Jesus to cleanse us. We proclaim that he is the risen Son of God. And as all believers, we lift up our hands, we open our hands to receive your Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, as we walk into this year, may we continue and may we persevere in hardship. May the characteristics of you shine through us. And Lord, when we need to come back to you and put up our hands for a mistake that we've, we've done or a sin in our lives, may we do it gracefully and may we be quick to seek you. In your name, amen.
Thank you, Michael, for your message. It's always encouraging to hear something that helps us to, to um, push through the difficult times. Next week for our final summer series, Lisa Humbly is bringing us a message titled, Come and See, which sounds very intriguing, so I better be tuning in for that one. Thank you again for joining us today. And let me leave you with a blessing from Philippians 4, 13. I can do anything, whatever God asks me to, because of the strength that Jesus Christ gives me. God bless.